Hi all, I'd just like to give a quick whiteboard lecture now on health and hygiene matters. When you're out there in the bush, when you're out there camping, this is my take on health and hygiene and the sort of items you should be taking with you to affect um, good health and hygiene. Okay, now this is survival group 9B, health and hygiene. 9A is first aid. And we are talking about these important parts of the body, the teeth, the feet, the groin area, the underarm area, and your hair. And you know, the last four things, or pretty much all five things, need to be kept as clean as possible. That's a given. But there's a few um, extra points here because what we are talking about is situations where we're not really um, bathing or having a shower. Now, if you have a nice river, you're camping, of course you can shower, bath in the river, sure. But um, in a survival situation, you still want to look after these areas of the body. They're the most crucial areas. And water may be at a premium. So here are what I think is eight items you can take with you. And the first item is powdered soap and or laundry powder. I think powdered soap is the easiest thing to carry with you. You don't have to muck around with a bar of soap in a container and so forth. You can take a container of powdered soap, just pour out as much as you want into your hand and so forth. And laundry powder can still wash the body, but it can also wash clothes and things. And of course, powdered soap can wash clothes, but I found the last time I went camping, we took laundry powder, and that was fine as far as um, having a bath in the river was concerned. The second item is baking soda. I think baking soda is a great multi-use item all over the body. You can use it as a dry wash. It dries the body. It's healthy. You can also eat it, consume it. It gives you sodium back in the body if you need to replace lost electrolytes if you're sweating a lot. Baking soda is a great item for the body. Then we've got a toothbrush. Obviously for cleaning the teeth. And Toothpaste is a question mark. That's an optional item. You can have a toothbrush with or without toothpaste. Now, if you've got plenty of water, toothpaste is fine. But if water's at a premium, then you don't really want to use toothpaste. But a toothbrush is still a good idea to scrub out the teeth. You can still clean the teeth pretty well, even without toothpaste. A toothbrush, of course, you can cut the handle off, cut it in half to save room if you want. Now, toothpicks. Toothpicks are a great item, obviously for picking out the teeth, cleaning out the teeth. They're very small and lightweight. And the same goes with dental floss. You can take dental floss in a small container, it weighs nothing, clean out the teeth, and it can also be used as cordage, very fine cordage, for example, arrowheads and stuff like that. You can use dental floss as cordage. Then a comb. Comb to comb out the hair. Do you want to keep your hair as short as possible? Perhaps, but comb, you can comb out parasites, bugs, um, and dirt and so forth from the hair. A mirror is another great multi-use item. You can look at your teeth, look in your eyes, if there's something stuck in your eyes, look at parts of your body that you can't see, the, your back and so forth. You can use it for signaling as well. It's a first aid tool, so a mirror. And salt is another great multi-use item to clean your teeth, an old school way of cleaning your teeth. It's, it can be used to disinfect wounds and so forth. Put in your food, you can get back lost sodium and electrolytes into, into the body if you're sweating a lot and losing those electrolytes. So it's a great multi-use item is salt. So there's eight items there, and you can see how the parts of the body now have been addressed. Your teeth, you've got four items. Toothbrush, toothpicks, dental floss, and salt. And toothpaste could be a fifth item. Your feet, well, all the other parts of the body is general cleaning, baking soda, and the hair, of course, we've got a comb. Now, just a few more points as far as your feet are concerned. Your feet, you want to keep as clean and as dry as possible. What you want to do is take off your boots, shoes, and socks. How many times a day? Well, as often as possible. As many times as possible throughout the day. Air out your shoes, your socks, get them dry, put them out in the sun, air out and dry out your feet and you can use baking soda and so forth on your feet. That's good foot care, the foot, that's why feet is right up there. I think number two after teeth. The teeth is a major health issue with toothaches and so forth, but the feet is very important. If you look back at the army from World War I, um, the feet is a major issue even in the army for soldiers. You want nice fitting shoes and boots, 
If they're too tight, you walk all day, you're going to get blisters and so forth. And if your toenails are long, they can dig in and you can lose toenails and be very um, painful. So make sure your toenails are short. But most, more importantly, make sure your boots and shoes are nice fitting, not too tight. And I've got slip-on boots as the very last point in a question mark. I prefer to wear slip-on boots so I can take them off as often as possible throughout the day. Those big lace-up army-style boots are hard to take off. They do provide the best ankle um, support and protection, sure. If you're in very rough country or mountain climbing and so forth, you may want proper boots, lace-up boots to protect your ankle and reduce injuries. But I just prefer slip-on boots. I've got a particular style of walking, nice and carefully and slowly. I can reduce the chance of spraining or twisting my ankle by walking slowly and carefully. And I prefer slip-on boots for that very reason of health and hygiene. I can take the boots off and keep my feet and socks and boots as clean and as dry as possible. So there's the eight items. If I've left out anything, let me know. Any questions or comments, let me know. Um, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.